In this uh, video tutorial, I want to discuss with you how we can find ligand binding parameters when we have specific and unspecific binding. So in the previous tutorial, we have looked at the specific binding aspect of a ligand. So let's say we've got a radio labeled uh, ligand and this ligand binds to a receptor. Yeah, it is a reversible reaction and we get a ligand receptor complex. And we said we can define a KD for that. That is just simply the concentration of the ligand receptor complex divided by the product of the ligand and the receptor. We said we can actually model this behavior and this would be with an absorbance curve. So here we would plot the ligand concentration and here we would plot how much is bound. So that would be the ligand receptor concentration here that we have. And we would usually find a hyperbolic curve where this point here denotes the uh, B max value. We also said that half of the B max value, so half of B max, that would give us the ligand concentration here that is equivalent to the KD. So that was for the specific case. But uh, very often we also have some unspecific binding. So let me uh, illustrate that uh, with a slightly different color here. Very often this unspecific binding actually uh, does not rely on a receptor. It is just simply adding the ligand will increase uh, the, uh, for example, radioactive count. And that usually is pretty much a straight line. So this here is the unspecific binding, whereas the black one is the specific. And of course, uh, we have an additive effect. The specific and the unspecific binding, they are all uh, adding up. And what we will see is a curve like that, uh, where we add up the specific and the unspecific binding and we get a total, we get a total binding curve here. So that is what we very often measure, which is a combination of the unspecific and the specific binding. So I probably should uh, label this here also and say that here we've got the specific binding. And how can we actually put that into a model? Well, uh, we know the shapes of uh, both curves. So we can say bound, that is our ligand receptor uh, concentration equals. Now let's put the specific uh, binding together. So that would be B max times the ligand concentration that we have divided by the KD plus the ligand concentration. So that is the specific part. But we also add the unspecific part. So that's the unspecific binding. And for this, because it is usually a linear uh, relationship, we would say this is just we are looking at the gradient. So that would be unspec. I call the gradient just simply the unspecific component times the ligand concentration here. 
So that gives us a new equation that we can try and find out. So this is actually an equation with three unknowns. We are looking for B max, we are looking for KD, and we are looking at this gradient of the unspecific binding. So let's see if we can solve this with uh, from our experimental data. Uh, let's head over to Excel where we can try to uh, get this uh, problem sorted. So here, uh, as a reminder, we've got the equation bound equals B max. Uh, that's the specific binding. And here we've got the unspecific binding. And here we've got some experimental data here. Uh, now, what we try, what we can do is we can now build a model um, using this equation here, and we can estimate our KD, Bmax, and unspecific binding. So the uh, Bmax, I would probably say, is perhaps in the range of, let's say, 300 or something like that. Uh, it will go up depending on this unspecific term. So let's set, set this uh, provisionally at 300 uh, counts per minute. So that is uh, the Bmax, that's for the specific binding. The KD would be, if we set it to 300, it would be uh, roughly uh, maybe a, a, around 1 KD, just as an estimate. And the unspecific binding, well, let's set this to, we don't really know what this is, but let's set this to an arbitrary value of 10. So we've got some data here, and now we can do our model with this equation here. So let's put that into the uh, into Excel. So equals, we calculate B max, that's this value, and we lock the cell so that it stays constant, times the ligand concentration here. That's the ligand concentration divided by our KD. That's this value. And again, we lock it plus the ligand concentration. So that is the specific part. That's this first term. And now we add plus the unspecific term, the gradient. And we lock that again times the ligand concentration. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, we get a value which is uh, different from our bound value and we can do this calculation for the rest of the data. So we just simply drag it down. So here we've got our model, here we've got our bound data. This model now contains the specific part as well as the unspecific part. And now we can, again, we can calculate the square of the differences. So equals the square of the differences between our observed data minus the model data. And we will square this and we get the squared difference. And we do that for all the values. And we calculate the sum uh, of these differences. So here we've got the sum of the differences and uh, we get a value. Uh, but before we now run the solver, let's look at the data, what the data look like in a graphical representation. So let's compare the bound, the total observed data with the model. So we highlight the cells, we go over to scatter plot, and here we've got a scatter plot of the data. So here we see the bound, that's the blue line and the model, our prediction here is the brown line. And we should say that uh, the model actually contains specific and unspecific binding. So what can we do with that? 
Now let's run the solver. So we go to data and we go to solver. So here we come up with the solver. I will leave a link to a tutorial how to install solver in this description. So what do we want? We want this sum to be as small as possible because if the differences are really small, then uh, the sum would also be very small. And we want to achieve this by changing the values for KD, Bmax and the unspecific gradient here. So that's pretty much uh, what uh, we are looking at. And uh, we we don't need to worry about the negative values because all our values should indeed be positive. Uh, negative values would not make sense. So we uh, have uh, more or less everything. So let's solve the, uh, let's optimize these numbers that we just estimated here. So let's solve. It might take uh, a little bit of time, uh, but Solver says it has found a solution for it. So looks good. We've got some uh, numbers that make sense. So we just simply keep these solutions. And what we can do now is we can look at how good a fit the calculated uh, solutions from a solver are uh, with our model. And what we see is it's almost a perfect fit. So here, these are the blue line. I'm not sure if we can actually see this blue line. The blue line, these are our bound, our observed data, and the model is almost a perfect fit for the data. So we've got the values for KD, which is roughly two. Uh, for our Bmax, that is the maximum binding. And of course, what we can do now is we can now look at the specific binding here. So here for the specific binding, let's remove this curve here so that we get space. For the specific binding, we would just simply calculate this first part. So the specific binding equals Bmax that we have here. Uh, we lock the cell times the ligand divided by dkd. We lock the cell plus the ligand, close the bracket. We calculate a model for our specific binding only. So this is without the unspecific binding. And now let's have a look what this looks like. So we've got this data here plus these data here and let's plot them. So go to insert. We are looking at the scatter plot. So what we see here is we've got the bound data and our model. And we also see here with these grayish data this here is the specific binding. And if we so wish, we could also calculate the unspecific binding. But uh, with uh, this solver add-in, we can not only solve for two uh, variables, we can even solve for three variables and solve for specific as well as unspecific binding. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.